Hi, so it's an update. Um, I've had some questions about um, my aviary construction and predator proofing. So I just wanted to give it a little update. If you'll see, there is a strip of wire running all along the side of this, laying flat on the ground. It goes underneath and to the inside of the, the cage down there. And the purpose of that is that when a predator goes to dig, they're not gonna to try and get underneath it. They're not gonna dig out here at the edge. They're gonna dig at the edge of the cage. And you can't dig through half inch chicken wire, no matter what you are. Not a raccoon, not a coyote, not a dog, nothing is getting under there. Cause you just can't dig through that wire. So they can't get into it. Um, again, I don't own the house that I'm living in right now. So all of my cages are made in panels. Um, and stuck together as you can see right there with a bolt So this side is a flat panel Four feet wide. It has two panels bolted on to either side of it and there's bolts at the top um, As far as weatherproofing goes, I've actually made these just wire all over um, Or with um, a wooden top and wooden sides and the wooden top and sides was a mistake because it gets hot in the summer um, uh, and uh, unless you're building a gabled roof, um, it's going to hold water in the winter anyway. So, um, my, most of my cages just have a piece of painter's canvas, heavy duty painter's canvas over it, providing shade for the summertime. And on top of that, a piece of bisqueen, you know, the thin little plastic stuff, just stapled on top of it to hold the rain out. Um, in this climate, it'll stop raining sometime in the next month and stay dry for about six months. So I'll just pull it off um, and the canvas will keep it cool. Um, on my canvas idea, you can see this little guy up there in the corner. Oh, all you see is the uh, wire again. Hang on, let me go in there. So I've had two break breaches of the canvas um, divider. They're definitely trying to get through it. And these little guys are smart. Um, so the first thing that happened is in the girl's cage yesterday, they somehow, see how my, my canvas divider here is a separate panel, so I can take it off anytime I want to. Um, see, it's a, it's a piece of wood, a wooden frame with canvas stapled over the top of it. And it's held in place by hooks. There's one in that corner, one in that corner, one, where is it? One over there and one down there in that corner. So it's snap in and snap outable. The first thing that happened was um, this uh, hook up here in the corner um, was uh, not tight enough and they just popped it off and it sagged backwards and the girls all went into the boy's side. <laughs> so I had to take it off and hammer it with a hammer to make the hook hook downward more. Um, and now they can't move it. They can't get it unhooked. Um, but once they made that breach, everybody said, oh, you know, that corner, we can get through that corner. So over here on the boys' side, you'll see we have, um, emerald up there. I mean, barrel up there right now. Um, so over here, once I refastened it so they couldn't get through it, if you'll take a look, the, the guys are chewing on it. Do you see the chewing up there and up there? trying to find a way through it. They will not find a way through a two by two. Um, but I'll probably staple the wire down there a little more firmly just so they don't get any ideas about peeking over it. So, um, But so far, I still think we're pretty impenetrable except for a few um, minor issues. So um, that's the update. And on the panel cages, when I make the double entry, the double entry is the only panel that's three-dimensional. All the rest of them are flat. So when I go to put these things on my truck, um, when I move them, I take them all apart, lay the, the flat panels down on the top of the truck, and lay the one with the, um, with the, uh, okay, let me back up and show this to you from a distance. Uh, and this is the panel that has the, um, the airlock in it, I call it and that will just lay on the top and stick up the two feet. Um, won't make any difference because since it's all wire, it's not gonna catch any air and get blown around or anything. So it should be fine when it comes time to move. Um, I also, oops, back up. That is my turtle tank. I got, uh, when my son was four years old, somebody said, can we give him a baby turtle for his birthday? I said, sure. And they gave me, uh, they gave us a little, um, 
Red eared slider in a little plastic box with a half inch of water and some marbles rolling around in it, beating the shit out of the baby turtle. And I thought, you know, it's not going to live long in there. So I looked it up and, and uh, on the internet and found out that basically baby turtles need a tropical fish environment in a 10 gallon tank with a dock to haul out on. And guess what? <laughs> they grow really fast when you take care of them. So um, they're currently living in a 700-gallon seven, stock tank. Um, this big thing over here is uh, that you see in the back, the whiskey barrel is a filter. It's got plants growing in it. It's a murky mess right now, but it'll clear up as soon as the weather warms up a bit. Um, and I have, this is my big girl right here. Uh, I have five turtles in here. Three big girls like this. She's about 12 inches long. Um, that's her dock. And, uh, two males and a few koi hidden in the in the murky mess. So, um, like I said, it'll clear as, as soon as the water gets above 60 degrees and the beneficial bacteria kicks in, so. Um, and it also has one of these multi-paneled um, things on it. This one is six feet tall and 12 feet long and 12 feet square to fit around the 750 gallon stock tank. But it's the same thing, held together with bolts, panels, uh, there's two panels that are on the roof, and there's a board in the middle holding them up, and um, they just work great. Uh, and, you know, turtles don't care if it rains, so they don't need a shelter. They just need to keep the raccoons out. Um, so that's the update. On the... This one is the same thing. I made it a little taller, and I'm sad because it's seven and a half feet tall instead of six and a half feet, and it's much harder to get to deal with the roof. But it's the same thing, canvas to shade. Um, this screen over the top of it for rain. That's what's going on here too in the breeding shed. Um, canvas for shade. And I ended up having to put canvas on this. I made a solid wood back and roof on this. And I had to put canvas on them anyway because the wood gets hot in the sun. If you put white canvas on it, it reflects the heat so it doesn't get so hot in there. I was cooking my poor breeders, you know. Um, and this canvas on this side is because this is the west side so it, the sun beams in there in the afternoon so that canvas is pretty much permanent with a, a strip open along the top to let um, warm air out and this side is open because it faces the east and the north um, but I put bisqueen on it because we are still in the rainy season so so that's the uh, and I didn't have to put a double entry on this one because the birds are all in cages in there so it's its own double entry um, so that is the habitat explanation Every single one of these has wire around the bottom to keep the predators out, including the turtle tank, wire around the edge. And eventually the plants grow through the holes in the wire, as you can see they're doing right over there, and it disappears completely. You can't even see it. So you can't see the wire over here either. I put this, I moved this. That's the other thing, they have a natural bottom. And I can literally pick it up and move it over to here when that bottom gets icky. Um, and I don't have to worry about cleaning cages. So there is wire down here. You can see some right here that all the plants are growing through it, so it's disappearing. Um, nothing is getting into that cage. Okay, that's it.